Welcome to Online Chemistry. My name is Tara Hurd and I will be your instructor for this summer. This is a very fast paced course. Um, even though it, there's eight weeks to the course, the eighth week is the week for the final exam. So really you have seven weeks to cover the same amount of, uh, the same amount of material that we would cover in a regular fall or spring semester. My best advice for you guys is do not fall behind. Um, I mean, I know you have a, a busy summer. Uh, maybe you are holding down a job in addition to taking this class, maybe multiple online classes, but you cannot wait until sun Sunday to learn the material and complete the assignments. Um, you will not be successful spending one day a week on the material. You really need to jump on assignments first thing on Monday. Just set aside a an hour or two each day to work on chemistry. Okay, so um, log into Canvas. Um, you've already done that, probably. Go to the modules. You'll see this on the home page, but the modules page, um, they're in order each week. Now, by the time you guys log in, there will be a module at the top of this that's student information module. And there is a lot of useful information in the student information module that will be about how the online classes run. Uh, many of you are probably EMCC students, but there's likely we have students that are from other colleges taking this EMCC course. So um, look through the student information module. There's lots of documents there that you should be familiar with. And that, that's just kind of the housekeeping of online courses at EMCC. This module title week one is about chemistry. And so there is a welcome to chemistry uh, module and you can read through that. Then the introduction module, um, of course the first, one of the first assignments you'll need to do is introduce yourself on the discussion board and that is for a grade. Um, then there's an orientation quiz Y'all, I encourage you to use the syllabus. You see the link on your left for syllabus? Um, use the syllabus to work the orientation quiz. It's just 14 multiple choice questions, and the answer to every one is found on the syllabus. Um, there is an entry here about my YouTube lectures. I have been working for years on a YouTube channel, and um, each semester I'll record a few new videos to add to the channel, and I just continually add to it. So look, you're not going to be learning chemistry by just reading the book or by just doing a homework question and trying to figure it out. The way you should do this course is to actually watch the YouTube videos because that's you sitting in lecture. That's what you would do if you weren't taking it online. Um, watch the YouTube videos. Watch them in the order that I give them to you. Um, you should you know, at times you're going to want to pause the YouTube video and try to work the problem that I've given and then resume play in the video and, the, and watch me work it. That's going to be your best practices for being successful with the course. Um, how do you know which YouTube videos to watch? In each module, there's a section that looks like this. It's called Read and Watch Chapter 1, and it'll list the YouTube videos in order. So, I mean whether you watch every YouTube video on one day or whether you split it up amongst a few days, you should watch all the videos and take notes. Um, then there will be online homework each week. The online homework is through a program called Alex. Now you have already paid for access to Alex um, and with Alex comes the ebook. Okay, so you've that is covered in the cost of tuition for the course. Um, the Alex assignments, this review module is an Alex assignment, and they're usually titled like this one, Chapter 1 Alex, Chapter 2 Alex, etc. Uh, the review module is going to review you on some math skills because, as you guys will see in reading the syllabus, college algebra is a prerequisite for taking chemistry. Um, Chemistry is a lot of math, and you've got to have strong math skills to take chemistry. I, I would go so far as to say if you're taking online chemistry, that's even more important 
that you have stronger math skills because you're not going to be able to stop me mm -hmm. mid-lecture and ask a question because your lectures are on YouTube. Uh, so the review module is just going to test that. And if you struggle with that review module, um, you can do with that what you, what you may. You might need to uh, go review some math tutorials or perhaps you would do better in a face-to-face -face environment where you could ask questions about the math process. Um, the other Alex for week one is just chapter one Alex, which is the chapter you'll be covering this week. Uh, let me tell you how the Alex assignments work. When you click on that chapter one Alex, you do not have to finish it all in one sitting. I have it set up so that if you click on it and you work question one and two today, when you come back in an hour or two hours or later in the week, you can pick up where you left off. So it always saves your work and you just add to it. Um, I also have it set so that you can have multiple tries on each question. So if you miss it, you can, if you miss a question, you can redo that question and there will be no points deducted if you have to redo a question. Um, I think I've got it set to where you get three tries on each question. Um, if you miss it on all three tries, then obviously that means you don't get any points for that question. You can jump around on the questions if you want. Um, probably not recommended because it's probably, most of the questions are gonna be in order of how I cover things. Um, but uh, one big thing about the Alex assignments, if you complete the chapter one Alex, and let's say, I mean, something happens and you just do really poorly and you have like a, I don't know, a 70. Um, as long as it's before, like for chapter one, as long as it's before June 9th at midnight, you can redo the whole assignment and I'll take your highest score. Okay, so if you redo it and you make 100, then I'll keep the 100. Now, when you redo it, you have to redo every question. You don't get to redo just the ones you missed. You will be starting over, okay? But those, um, the Alex assignments, that counts, per t that counts for 10% of your final grade, okay? Now, what I did in week one, because you also have a lab portion to this course, for week one, I split the lab into a different module because, and notice the title of the module, it's not as bad as it looks because there are a lot of things here, but it's not as bad as it looks, trust me. You will have to purchase access to the virtual lab you have two ways to purchase it. You can either just click on the first one that says Introduction to Lab Simulations and you'll be prompted from there to purchase it. Or if you uh, want to purchase an access code from the EMCC bookstore, you can do that. And then when you click on this link, you'll have to enter that code. Most students um, will enter their credit card after they click on the lab. So the first assignment is just an introduction as you can see, to lab simulations. It's just questions about the logistics of the lab. And then think of this, like see where it says laboratory skills, background, and then experiment one, two, three, and post lab. Y'all, that's all one, one lab right there. It's multiple entries. It's five different entries, but it's one lab. The laboratory skills, the background, it's just what it is. It's just telling you about the lab, what it's gonna look like when you enter the lab, what things you find on different shelves, whether it's glassware, chemicals, equipment, etc. There's a pre-lab there that's multiple choice questions, and I actually set the, have it set up where I don't grade those multiple choice questions, but it's um, that's gonna be honing your skills for understanding the lab. So you can work those, and if you get it wrong, it'll give you a little feedback immediately, and you can just, um, make sure you understand what you're going to do in the lab. The experiment is just what it is. You're going to be, you will see very quickly, you're going to be dragging beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks and thermometers from the lab, and it'll tell you step by step, experiment one, what to do, experiment two, experiment three. In all the experiment part, you're going to want to write down your numbers. You can write it on notebook paper. You can use, uh, write it digital. It doesn't matter to me. Personally, I prefer keeping everything on notebook paper because I find that easier to navigate. Um, but write down the masses, write, be sure you record units, keep it neat. 
because when you get to the post lab, now this part, you can only work one time. The rest of it, the background, the pre-lab, and the procedures, y'all, you can work through that multiple times. Um, like if you do experiment three twice, you should have the same numbers on both trials. And I recommend sometimes working them twice because it's easy. Uh, maybe you forget to tear the balance. That would be zero it out. And so your mass that you write down is wrong because you didn't start with your balance at zero when you put it on there. So sometimes it's a good idea to work through them twice to be sure you've recorded the correct numbers. But when you get to the post lab assignment, um, there's gonna be a lot of multiple choice questions and sometimes it's gonna be where you need to enter the mass of the beaker that you weighed, et cetera. You can only work the post lab assignment one time. Okay, so once you click on it, you have to work it. You cannot look at it and review the questions and come back later. Um, and that's how the labs work. So you'll see the next lab, that's one lab this week, lab skills. And then the characteristic properties, that's lab two, but y'all see there's many entries. And then density, that's lab three. So even though it looks like a lot of entries, it's just three labs, okay, the first week. Um, that's a little bit about how the course is run. There's a lot of details on the syllabus that I want you to check out. Um, I have it set so that you could go on to week two. Um, you're moving at a pretty fast pace. If you finish week one before June 9th and you're jumping into week two before June 10th. Um, but I will be, I know week one and week two are set up like I, um, I'm ready to have those for you to work those right now. Uh, but I will be checking, even though week three you see it posted, coming up on the week before, I'll be checking week three and tweaking everything and making sure it's how it needs to be in there. Um, so hopefully that video is helpful to you on how to navigate. I think a video and me talking to you is sometimes easier than you trying to read it and look at it and figure it out on your own. Um, Y'all don't hesitate to reach out to me with a question, either through Canvas messages or my email, which is on the syllabus. Um, I will be teaching on campus this summer. I'm offering a face-to-face -face Chem 1 at the Golden Triangle campus. That's the Mayhew campus uh, in June. So there's uh, several students that are signed up for that. So I'll be Monday through Thursday. I will be on campus. Um, there's not a lot of time for office hours this summer because... I'm teaching a Chem 1 and a Chem 2, and those are extremely intensive courses. So um, I'm pretty um, booked up just teaching those two classes. But uh, I'm available to you, so reach out if you have questions, and hope you have a great semester.